Hello and welcome back to Geordie Leather. This is episode 19 where we're going to talk quickly about buckles. Uh, we've covered D-rings and O-rings in the previous episode but today it's buckles as promised. Um, if we look at the overhead cam you can see that buckles come in a wide range of sizes, shapes, colours, finishes. There's a massive range. Uh, they're all basically the same. Uh, I'll go through the basic parts of a buckle. So a buckle consists of usually, not always, but often a rectangle frame. Sometimes they're oval round, but generally rectangles are a popular shape. Um, some, like this one, have a centre bar. Others have a, a roller, like this. Um, but if you look at the one with the centre bar, the little bit of metal that sticks into the hole in the belt is um, the tongue, the tongue of the buckle to use the right term. Now we look at the tongue in the side view, just turn it around so you can see it there, you can see it's got a bit of a kink in the end. Now that little kink always has to rest on the surface of the buckle. So when it's lying flat you can see that it's the kink is lying over the end of the buckle. If it was the wrong way around, you would see that it just wouldn't look right or work right because it's sticking up like this. So that's the first thing. Some buckles, let's take this one for example, have a small indentation which shows you which side is the face side. So when the tongue is in the right position, the tongue actually sits in that little indentation. Not all buckles have this, but uh, this particular one does. And this is the one we're going to be using today. So to determine the size of a buckle, buckles are measured across here, which is the uh, the strap width. Now, I've pre-cut a strap just for this demonstration. So the strap width, this is a 25mm strap, and this is a 25mm buckle. So when they, the strap is in the buckle, it should slide through, you can see on the overhead cam, without any resistance. So that's how we determine the width or size of a buckle from here to here. Now, I've prepared a blank. This is a short belt. Um, to use the technical term, if you want to keep things proper, the strap of leather that goes into a buckle is called a billet. So often on things like saddlebags, rucksacks, where you have a strap of leather attached to the flap of a bag, the bit that hangs out is called the billet and that goes into the buckle. So today we're not going to cover the actual in-depth uh, method for making it a belt. That's actually going to be the first video in our Make With Me series. So we'll go through the fine detail of how to make a belt from scratch. But today we're just looking at the buckle in a general terms. So we're going to fit this buckle to the end of this strap. So we'll do that next. So to give you an idea what the final product looks like, this is a little demonstration belt I make to show students. So it's the same buckle we're going to use today. And again, over camera gives the best shot. So as you can see, if you look on the side view, the billet or the strap of leather is woven through the buckle and then is fixed back on itself often with a, a belt loop now again we'll discuss belt loops in detail in the following video but belt loops can either be made of metal like this or the more traditional method is a loop of leather like so so as you can see if you look carefully there's actually a slot cut into the the billet here which allows the tongue of the buckle to stick out. So let's take our piece of leather. So the pro first process is to determine where the fold is going to be. So this is the buckle we're going to use. So if we just put our strap of leather, our billet, through the buckle and then bend it over until we have approximately, it's not, it's not fixed in stone, approximately I would say about 40 mil, but everyone has different ideas. So that's where the belt's going to be 
um, fixed. Now, so we need a groove here, which will accommodate the tongue of the belt. So we just make a, a pencil mark where we think the groove's going to be. And then we can take it away. Now we need to put our groove there. Now there are various methods for making grooves, uh, little slots for belts and other similar hardware. Um, you can buy a really expensive slot cutting tool, which will set you back quite a bit, or you can do it by hand, simply punching a hole either end and then cut, cutting out the leather between those two holes. It requires a bit of skill to do that. The alternative method is to use a simple uh, leather cutting die. I have a great collection of them. Let me have a look. A leather cutting die is basically a, a piece of steel which has been bent to the shape that you want and the edge has been ground to a sharp edge. So we'll do this. I use my trusty um, anvil and we'll cut our slot in the belt. Like I say, we won't go into fine detail at this stage, it's just to show you the, the basic method for installing a buckle. So position your die so it's in the centre of your strap, your billet, and then keep your fingers out the way and give that a tap. As you can see, when we move that, it gives us a nice perfect uh, little slot. That's brilliant. We do sell these dies on the GW website, sorry, the G Geordie Leather website. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, so if you don't want to do that, you can simply take a punch. For example, punch, where are we? In the camera. Punch a hole either side and then using a knife, cut between those two slots, those two holes. But that is a simple method. And it's my preferred method. So we then take our buckle. Now, remember what I said about the little indentation? Not all buckles have these, but some do. That's the face side of your buckle. So that needs to be on the same side as the face side of your leather. So thread your billet through the buckle and then make sure the tongue comes up through the slot, like so. And make sure the tongue is sitting in the groove or the kink of the tongue is on that surface of the buckle before you fold it. It's quite easy to put the buckle in backwards so check that before you fix the leather together. So the next procedure is just to bring your leather together making sure your tongue is sitting in that groove nicely. So like so. So as you can see on the camera there the buckle should swing easily and the little tongue should swing easily. So there are various methods for fixing this part of the strap to the other part of the strap. Um, as you can see from the original the sample I did, I stitched this. Uh, this is the strongest method and it's the rec recommended method in my opinion for making quality belts. A lot of modern belts are just simply riveted with a single rivet which over time that rivet will fail and it will come apart. So you can put a single rivet or you can put two rivets which gives it a bit extra strength. If you want to use a riveting method I suggest that you use copper rivets. They're much stronger and are basically indestructible. So for belts, long term life span of belts, copper rivets are the way to go. <coughs> so like I say if you wanted to use um, a metal loop, they're called a loop, or a traditional leather loop, this is the time you would fit it. You would insert, insert your loop over your billet. And then it would go, if you look at the side, between those two pieces, and that would be glued and riveted at that stage. Like I say, you can also use the metal ones, which are a bit more stylish, a bit more modern, but everyone has different ideas, everyone has different tastes. So you can see here that would be glued 
and then in this case either stitched which gives a nice strong connection that will last a lifetime or riveted but we'll cover the fine detail of doing that in the belt making episode which follows this one so we won't go into the detail of actually punching and stitching and riveting i've shown you that before the idea today was just to show you how a buckle is fitted to a strap and some of the technical jargon around buckles so just to recap the buckle the belt loop and the strap of leather which slides into the buckle is called the billet so we're keeping it simple that's basically it for this um, next video we're going to start from scratch with our very first project with the make for me make, make with me series and um, we're going to actually make a proper belt which will fit me so it's a long piece of leather anyway so until next time thanks for watching if you are interested in any of the materials hardware tools you can find everything on the Geordie Leather website. So check it out and please don't forget to like the video, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye.